we've just talked about when to use temporal method and when to use current rate method. Now let's look at what are the differences between these two methods. First, let's look at temporal method. Temporal method, the purpose is to, is to produce the same result as if the foreign subsidiary's book of record has been maintained in the functional currency. So specifically on the balance sheet, all of the monetary items so for example, cash, marketable securities, receivables, those are, those are monetary items which are asset and liability carry on the, carried on the firm's balance sheet at the cur current or future value. So that is the definition of a monetary, monetary item. And all of those items, including most of the liabilities, those are measured at the current rate. And all of the non-monetary items are measured using the historic rate. For equity, except return earning is measured as historic rate. That is for the balance sheet. And for the income statement, non-balance sheet related items are measured at average rate. And the balance sheet related items, for example, depreciation, which is an income statement item, which is related to the balance sheet item, which is PP&E amortization, which is kind of related to the intangibles, goods of, cost of goods sold, which is related to inventory. Those are measured at historic rate. On the statement of cash flow, operating cash flow depending on the income statement. Investing financing cash flow remeasured using the historic rate. So that is just uh, uh, the rule here. This is the, that is temporal method. Now let's look at current rate method. Current rate method, the assumption here is that foreign operation represent a foreign currency net asset. So on the balance sheet, all of the assets and liabilities are translated using the current rate. Equities except return earning is translated at historic rate. Income statement, all income statement items are translated at the average rate. Statement of cash flow, operating cash flow depending on the income statement. Investing financing cash flow translated at historic rate. So as you can see here, uh, which these two methods of translation, they basically differs, they differ in a lot of ways that we are going to look at later. But as you can already see here, like um, different, me different methods use different kind of use different rates to different items. Uh, and also the currency, currency translation adjustment recorded in other comprehensive income. This we are going to look at as well later. And the comparison of these two methods, just a brief comparison, net exposure, that is basically how much of the firm's net assets is exposed to the change in the exchange rate. So if it is the temporal method, that is cash, marketable security receivables minus liability. If it is current rate method, that's total asset minus total liability. Can you understand why it is like this here? Why? So basically, if you still remember the, um, the example we gave at the beginning of this class, we have 100 great, great British pound deposited in the bank. And so this 100 great, great, deep, great, great British pound, uh, the value of this pound, um, under what situation would, there, would the change in the exchange rate have an effect on how we measure this, the value of this 100 great, great British pound into US dollars? It is only when the firm is using the current rate, right? So if the firm has been, the historic rate is 1.8. And if next year the firm is also using 1.8, 1.8 every year in the future, the into the US dollars, the firm don't have any exposure to the changing the exchange rate because we are always using the historic rate. So what the current rate is, is irrelevant for us here. Versus if the firm is using the current rate, it can be 1.7 for the current year, 1.6 for next year, 2.0 for the year later. 
then you're going to have, once you translate this 100 great, great British pound into US dollars, you're going to have a fluctuation in the value of this deposit, depending on what the current rate, what the current exchange rate is at the financial statement closing date. So maybe next year it's 170 and it becomes 160, it becomes 200. But all of this, this 100 great, great British pound doesn't change. It's always in your Britain, British bank. But what caused the change in the US dollar value? That is purely because of the change in the exchange rate. <laughs> so the next exposure here is always the asset that is measured using the current rate. And under the temporal method, cash, marketable security, receivables, liabilities. So those are monetary items. Those are, if you, we go back to look at here, those monetary items we use the current rate. So, and then uh, all of the rest we use the historical rate rate. So this is the only exposure here if we use the temporal method versus if we use the current rate method, all of your assets and liabilities we use the current rate. So your exposure, your all of your assets and liability will be subject to the change in, in the foreign exchange rate. So that will be your next net exposure under the current rate method. So just as a brief summary here, we have all of the accounts and then which method we use. So this table, you can rely on it once we go to the specific example later. And then, so just as a side note, if it is a highly inflated inflationary economy. Uh, here, the rule is that the temporal rate is used. And what is a highly inflationary economy? It is when usually when the country's cumulative three-year inflation exceeds 100%. Um, so for most of the countries, and most of the time, we don't have this issue. But you should keep in mind that for some certain countries, uh, during some certain period of time, they do have this issue. And if it happened in one of the foreign subsidiary, we need to use the temporal method no matter what.